Last Thursday when we uh, talked to the congressional leaders, he made the point that this is a compelling issue. It's of the utmost importance to the American people, and uh, bipartisan cooperation is key, putting out principles, working with uh, leaders that shared the same principles at the outset. Uh, we're able to, uh, to come to an important agreement. Now, the work is far from over, and as far as I'm concerned, on this package, it's not going to be over until it's enacted, until we get the, the checks out to the American people. And again, there's a lot uh, that, that I have on my plate as we look at the capital markets and watch things uh, carefully in this economy. Senate Democrats have made it clear that they want to add more to this package. They want to see an extension of unemployment benefits, uh, some, some increase to the food stamp program. Uh, if this package gets more expensive in the Senate, is that going to be a, a deal breaker? Well, let me, I, I never speculate as to what may or may not happen or what's the deal breaker. Uh, let me step back and remind everybody that first in the meeting on Thursday and then in the meeting we had on Tuesday that set the stage for this, and that was a bicameral meeting. So we had the leaders of the Senate and the House. And both Harry Reid and Mitch McConnell took the lead in saying, this is too important, we need to move quickly, so start in the House, work on a bipartisan basis, and we're very supportive of this, this is our will, okay? So we've done that. Now, I recognize the Senate has an important role to play. I continue to believe the principles we have here are the right principles. This agreement reflects those principles. I, I will be up uh, later today uh, t t talking with Max Baucus and, uh, and Chuck Grassley uh, and, 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 and talking about this. And we know that the, the, the Senate is, is, is very important and they're, they're going to go through their own deliberations. But again, I think the American people are not going to have a lot of patience for taking time. And I, I think the House has set a standard and it's a, it's a very important standard. And the American people, we owe the American people speed, and we owe them a package that's going to work. And that's the other thing that's key here. In the past, you've seen, quote, different stimulus bills where there are parts of it that really are going to have very little to do with stimulus or very little to do with making a difference in this year. And so the House has been disciplined. It's set a high standard. And I'm looking forward to working with the, uh, with the Senate. And I think what we've got is great. I'm very open, as everyone, to working with the Senate. But again, uh, right after we've completed something that uh, we think is effective and is going to work, and again, I appreciate the leadership of the Senate, uh, uh, Messrs. Reed and McConnell, making this possible. If they hadn't said, go work with the Senate, uh, and said, we want to be part of this process early on, it would be very difficult to get where we are as quickly. Also, can you just explain why um, you don't want to extend the unemployment insurance if the goal of it is to stimulate the economy and to help people who are having trouble in the downturn? Well, well, and secondly, would you be open to the idea of a second bill that would maybe that might well, allow you to give the, some time? We have unemployment insurance, and unemployment insurance kicks in when it's needed. Okay, this is what this bill is. This this proposal, which is going to very quickly become legislation and very quickly going to be passed by the House. This is aimed at providing benefits to, to working families, and it's clearly going to be stimulus, and that was, it was a very important test, and at businesses. We wanted to keep it simple, and that's where the focus is, and I say nothing other than that. You want to the second bill? Listen, the, I'm focused on this bill now. And there are going to be a number of policy priorities. We all have policy priorities. But the, the, the beauty of this is everyone agreed that for the good of the country, we are going to put those on a different track. This is on the fast track. And let's get this done, and then let's think about uh, other priorities. When, yes. When you spoke about the spirit of cooperation last Thursday when you talked to the senators as well as the yeah. leaders of the House. And yet uh, Senator Reid has a release out that says the Senate will work to improve the House package by adding funds. Is that a deal breaker? Uh, again, I've got great respect for Senator Reid because remember, he set the stage for this. He, he, he was right there in the front. He was the first one to say, I uh, defer uh, to the House, take the lead. 
I'm going to continue to make the case uh, here that we, we don't need, what we need is we need something that's going to be quick and be effective. And again, I, I don't know what he has in mind, but almost every spending program I've looked at, every infrastructure spending, doesn't meet the test of making a difference quickly. Okay, so that, so the test we want to do, and, and, and what was so productive about the discussions in the House, and I would say this, the Speaker and the Leader, both, uh, bo both Nancy Pelosi and John Boehner, were incredibly disciplined because there are all kinds of ideas that came in. And, you know, this thing could easily look like a Christmas tree. And, I, you know, I made a joke when I was here last that, you know, that, you know, Christmas time is long past and we need something that's simple. And so it's easy. There are all kinds of ideas. But if, if you hold it up and you say, is this stimulus, how quick is this going to be? How quick will the money get out there this year? I think if we can keep that discipline in, in, in the Senate, and I'm optimistic we'll be able to. Thank you. There are two things in this, uh, in, in this House package. One is the FHA modernization. And remember, we've got legislation passed by the Senate, passed by the House, it, it, you know, it, it, and it's, it's in conference. We need that legislation done. That's, so that's part of this, and that's going to help in, in, uh, on the, uh, with subprime mortgages, and that will be, uh, be very helpful. The other thing is, uh, is something which i got to confess that, although I understand it, I didn't support it. You know, we all, when people talked about everybody didn't get everything they wanted, and I guarantee you some people got a few things they didn't want. And, and so when you looked at the, uh, what, what there is, is it, with regard to the GSEs, in this bill will be a, a uh, provision that raises the conforming loan limit. So that's for jumbo mortgages for the GSEs for a temporary period of time. And this will be till December 31, so a temporary period of time. And both the, um, the House and I, and I very much, I know how committed Barney Frank is to say this will not get in the way of GSE reform. And I really commend uh, uh, Chairman Chris Dodd for making a similar statement about working on GSE reform because it's essential. Now, just so you know my view on that, my view, and I was very clear on this throughout the side, but I, I, I got run down by a, by a bipartisan steamroller. I mean, Republicans and Democrats were united on this because – I have said, and I think I was one of the first people to say, it would be very helpful to raise the loan limit for the GSEs for a temporary period of time, given what's going on in that market. It will be very helpful. But I, longer term, of course, that flies in the face of their affordable housing mission, and I saw no reason why we couldn't get it as part of GSE reform legislation, because I think we need reform legislation. And I was somewhat skeptical that without this, we wouldn't get the reform. So now I've got to be an optimist and work for the reform and, uh, and, and, and look at the good that will come as a result of this. But any of it, uh, yes. And